We mentioned the term waste. What is waste? Think of it as anything that is not adding value to the customer. There are seven primary forms of waste to look for in a process. We use the acronym Tim Wood to help you remember them. T stands for transportation. This involves the movement of items from one location or process to another. Anytime we are physically moving items, the value is not getting better in the customer's eyes. In fact, only negative things can really happen when we move things around. We spend time packaging up for protection. We spend time and effort to move it. Then we unpackage it. It is wasting time, time that could be spent adding value to the product or service. I stands for inventory. This is a product or service that we have started working on, but have not completed. We have added some value and paid our workers to add that value and paid our suppliers for their contribution, but it's not complete yet. So we cannot give it to our customers in order to get paid. The more inventory we have, the more partial work is in place and the more money is wrapped up in those items. When you see inventory, it is a good signal that something isn't running very smoothly and an improvement effort is likely needed. M is for motion. We look for inefficient movement within your workplace. When you are reaching for tools, searching for items, going to ask others for information you need, or reaching over less used items for commonly used items, this is considered an excessive amount of, of motion, more than what is needed to do the job. You can also look for this motion while on a computer, searching for files or switching back and forth from software program to software program. W is for waiting. Anytime you're waiting for parts or documents, information or approvals, that is slowing down the response to the customer. This waiting will lead to inventory, which we've already mentioned as a form of waste. Identify the reasons for the delay and change the process so the delay is reduced or eliminated. The first O is for overprocessing. You might be performing a value-added task, but you might be going above and beyond what is required or what the customer wants. The next O is for overproduction. Anytime you produce more than what the customer wants, you're wasting time doing that extra amount when you could be spending that time on the value they actually want. Maybe you're giving your customer too many reports or charts or making it too perfect when good enough would suffice. Overproduction leads to inventory, which is another form of waste. The last letter D is for defects. When we don't do something right the first time, we spend time doing it over again, and that prevents us from adding value to the customer. Errors and mistakes should be eliminated from the process through mistake proofing techniques. There are actually more than seven wastes, but these are the most common. One popular eighth waste is called skills. If people are working in an area where they are not allowed to provide ideas or suggestions for improvement, then their knowledge is wasted. If they're in a job not suited for their skill sets or passion, then we are likely wasting their talent. We are also not getting their full effort since they realize this misalignment, which impacts the company performance and their own productivity. There is a handout of these seven and eight forms of waste in the reference links. Now let's tie this back to the environment. When we look at the seven forms of waste, each of those wastes has an environmental impact that goes along with it. So let's take a look at what each of them contribute to the environment. When we overproduce, that means extra products may spoil or become obsolete, requiring disposal. When we have excess inventory, we have to provide more energy to heat, cool, and light the inventory space. It also takes up more real estate. Maybe we have to rent out a larger space or have a, a larger building to house all the inventory. When we transport or have excessive, mo excessive motion, we have to use energy to do that transportation. And there may be emissions that come from that. We also have to package up those items to protect those components or items during the movement, which is extra materials. And we have the risk of damage and spills that might occur during transportation. When we have defects, then those defective components require us to either recycle, dispose, or scrap of those items out. And that can cause us extra money. A lot of those will end up in the landfill. And even if they're recycled down, there's still energy that's used to do the recycling process. And when we're waiting, there's a potential that the material can spoil or that can, components can be damaged or corrode. And then we'll have to throw those away or recycle them when we're done and order new materials to replace those. So all these different forms of waste have an environmental impact that goes along with those. In the next section, watch the video of making a pizza. I want you to look for the seven forms of waste and the environmental impacts that go along with it. 
jot them down on a piece of paper, and then we'll come back and talk about what you found. What you found. My name is Dawson Gibbs, and I'm gonna show you how to make a Papa John's pizza for when you get hungry. What you need is Dustinator, a docker, and a large dough, which we keep in here. What you want to do is get the large dough out, coat it in the dustinator, get it down, interlock your fingers so you can get a nice edge, and slowly go through your pizza just like this, about once or twice, so you can get a good get a good edge going. And then once you're done with that, flip your dough over, coat it with a little bit of dustinator stretch it till it's about 75% of its original size. And then once you stretch it out, get your docker. Docker about 8 to 10 times. So it's nice around. And then once it's done, you put your thumbs in, palms, and slap it out. So what you want to do, get it to a large screen. it's fitted to the screen you want to get about a cup of sauce so it goes on a large dough put it in the middle and slowly sauce it what you want to do make sure your sauce is evenly distributed on the pizza and once it is make sure it's everywhere and then once you get done you want to put your toppings on it Get about a handful of your toppings. Make sure it's all over your pizza. And if you want to balance it out, make sure it's evenly distributed. About a handful of sausage. Same thing. Make sure it's all over the pizza. And then you get your Canadian bacon. Well, not as much as ham. Get about half a handful. Spread it all over your pizza. And then once you get there, with the chicken, chicken's bigger, so you only want a couple pieces of chicken on it. And then you just want to put a couple pieces on the chicken pizza. And once you get your chicken on there, you want to move down and put your pepperonis. You only do about 9, 6, 3. Only put a couple pepperonis on there. Make sure it's all over the pizza. And then after that, this is the easiest part. A large pizza gets two cups of cheese. One on each side. One on that side. The video moved pretty quick, so it might have been hard for you to identify all the seven forms of waste, but they were there. So let's break it down a little bit, looking at the screenshots for each of the different forms of waste. In transportation, you might have noticed that they were carrying the pizza from station to station and then placing the pizza on the oven. There will also be transportation to deliver the pizza to the customer or the customers coming to dine in or pick up, and that was not shown in the video. For inventory, you might have noticed the gray boxes stacked up behind the worker that were filled with dough. There was a lot of money and labor invested in dough that they may not have needed today. It also takes up a lot of space. You might have also noticed all the pre-folded pizza boxes laying around. For motion, when the worker reached back and down on the ground to get the dough, that is excessive motion. The dough should be closer to the worker so he doesn't have to reach back. There is also motion when reaching to grab the ingredients. They could be placed in front of the pizza, which would be closer to the worker and require less reaching. Reaching can lead to injury or cause discomfort. Waiting. 
waiting for the pizza to cook in the oven causes a delay in getting the pizza to, getting the pizza to the customer. Yes, it is a required step, but there may be ways to pre-cook the dough while the toppings are being assembled or other ways to speed up the bake time. Overprocessing. When using the roller tool, he mentioned to use it eight to 10 times, but it looked like he only did that about seven times. Maybe five or six times is sufficient and more rolls than what was needed would be considered overprocessing. When placing the ingredients on the pizza, he had to readjust them and reset the edge of the dough a couple times, which is also overprocessing. Overproduction. The dough was placed onto pizza trays ahead of time in anticipation of orders, which is overproduction. The time spent preparing them on the trays in advance could have been time better spent working on existing customer orders. Defects. The cheese and the ingredients that didn't make it onto the pizza would be considered a defect since it did not land on the pizza and likely has to be thrown away. Perhaps a device could be used to keep all the ingredients on the pizza, which could be removed right before baking. There might also be defects not shown in the video of incorrect ingredients or the wrong size or the wrong toppings for the pizza that had to be returned from a customer. For the skills or people section, it might be hard to identify in the video, but we'd want to know what other jobs is this person qualified to perform? What, is, what other job experience do they have? And are, have they given improvement ideas that have been ignored? The last thing we want to discuss related to the video is an acronym called WASTE. I learned about this acronym at a green manufacturing specialist training class I took at Purdue University. It stands for water, air emissions, solid waste, toxins or hazardous waste, and energy. Waste is an easy way to think about the categories of environmental impacts in a process. Let's think about how the pizza making process impacts each of these five areas. Let's start with water. Water would be used to clean the trays that hold the pizza going through the oven along with the ingredient trays and utensils, the work uniforms, and water would be needed to wash the floors. Air admissions would relate to the food scraps thrown in the trash or any pizzas that were not made correctly, which break down and emit methane into the landfill, which is a greenhouse gas when it gets out into the air. It would also come from the pollution from the vehicles when delivering or picking up pizzas, from the trucks delivering supplies to the store and the trucks picking up the trash from the building. Solid waste includes the items in the trash, which would include the food scraps, along with packaging boxes and plastic wrap from supplied product, and the pizza boxes taken home by the customer. In addition, the, the ingredients that didn't make it onto pizza would be considered environmental waste. It has to be thrown away. That adds weight to the dumpster, and the trash vehicle will have to use more fuel to get to the landfill. Toxins or hazardous waste would be the cooking oils used to fry foods. It has to be treated separately and kept in a container, and a special truck has to be used to pick up and process it, which costs lots of money. Depending on the cleaning chemicals they use, those can be considered toxic, toxic to humans and may require special handling or disposal procedures. And finally, energy would be any energy source used in the store, including heat for the ovens, electricity and natural gas for heating and cooling the store, electricity to run the exhaust fans and to keep the freezer and refrigerator running. It would also include the electricity to light the store inside and outside. Now that you've learned about the seven forms of waste and the waste acronym for environmental impacts, hopefully you can look at your processes in a new perspective.